I think one is probably young people having more of a voice and feeling like they can make more of an impact. And it's getting a lot better today, but there's always people that say, oh, you're only 16, you can't do anything. And I hope that in the future, more kids will feel like they have a voice and they can actually have an impact. Hello, and welcome to More Than Sunday, a weekly podcast where we take a deeper dive into the stories, themes, and questions of our faith. My name is Eric Chikowski. I'm one of the worship directors here at First United Methodist Church Richardson, and with me every week is one of our associate pastors, Josh Fitzpatrick. Josh, good to have you today, man. It is always good to be here with you, Eric. I'm super excited about today's episode. It's a little different than most episodes we've done in that we are interviewing a panel. We've got three junior hires and three high schoolers who are going to tell us what it's like to be a teenager in America in the year 2019. I'm excited for this. This should be fun. I'm excited too. I was thinking about just offhand, some of the differences they probably go against. And I specifically was thinking about cell phones. I was thinking to myself about the fact that most of these students probably have a phone. It probably does more than my computer did when I was <laughs> yeah. their age. Oh, yeah. And I was, thinking, I was thinking the first time that I bought a cell phone, I remember cell phones were out when I was in junior high, high school. I'm not that old. And uh, it's, it's, all relative, it's I guess. been a minute. Yeah. But I remember, you know, asking my parents over and over and over again for a cell phone. And in our house, if we wanted a cell phone, you had to buy it yourself. And I didn't have enough money until I graduated from high school. So I was literally 18 before I got my first cell phone. And it was a flip phone. No touchscreen, no nothing. That yeah. is so classic. I too remember. I remember after getting my first job going to the singular store, like this was like my first big purchase. I think I was a junior in high school. I went in, signed my own contract, which I can't believe they actually let me do. At but, like 16, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess they did. And I got my cell phone. I remember the game to play was Snake. Oh, remember Snake? I do remember like, Snake. so basic, right? This little worm just chasing its own tail, trying to get the dots. In fact, I just downloaded this past week the Snake app. It's called Snake 99 that you can... Sh- I, I downloaded it and you can choose your classic cell phone cover to show up on your current smartphone. And my six-year-old daughter thought that was like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it's all cyclical. It's it's, right? Yeah, all it these is. games are cyclical. Someday we will be cool again, Eric. That's uh, I'm waiting for that day. <laughs> well, regardless, we're super excited to have this conversation. We're going to start off the conversation with three of our junior high students from here at the church, and then parlay that into a conversation with three senior high students. First off the bat, we're really excited to welcome Izzy Morrison, Will Patton, and Evan Gray. are here today with a little bit of a different episode. We're here with three junior high students. We've got Izzy Morrison, Will Patton, and Evan Gray in the studio with us. We're so glad to have you guys. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to start just by kind of going around the circle a little bit. Okay. So let's have Will you start and then Izzy and then Evan. Okay. Just tell us a little bit about yourselves. Tell us your name. Tell us your grade. Tell us your school and maybe an activity or something you're involved in. I'm Will Patton and I play football for Forest Meadow, and I'm in band. I'm Izzy Morrison, and I am in the seventh grade, and I go to Richardson West Junior High, and I'm involved in basketball. I'm Evan. I go to West Junior High. I'm in eighth grade, and I'm in band. So good to have you guys here. We're looking forward to hearing your perspective on life about what it's like to be a teenager in the year 2019. Now, we've got a question for you concerning technology. Technology has changed a lot since your parents were your age, right? So what is one thing about modern technology that your parents have a hard time understanding? So my parents understand like technology and like how it works, but I feel like they don't understand like why people do what they do over technology. Like, why would someone post this or say this about somebody over technology? I think adults these days just like don't get the apps we're on if they're safe or if they're not safe and like what their kids are on. So, how do you know if an app is safe or not? Well, like you know, it's like some apps like they don't even show it and stuff that if it's like if it's not safe, like it could just be a random person that tries to follow you on a platform of social media and. You really don't know if it's safe, but just, like, kids sometimes just download it for the fun of it. And, yeah. 
So let's talk about social media a little bit. You named maybe one of the cons that sometimes we don't know, you know, if it's safe or not. Tell us the pros and cons of social media. Maybe let's start with the pros. Like, what are the good things about social media? I think some things are good because you can connect with people and you might make friendships there, like with someone you might never know in the real world, but online you're friends with them. But on the other side of that, someone could be a fake friend with you and then try to meet you. So you just have to be careful. It's kind of good to see where, like, people are at in, like, life and how they're doing and, like, if you can pray for them as a faith platform, I guess. Okay, let's move to the cons. We've named one of them maybe that sometimes people may not be who they say they are. Maybe there's some things that are a little bit unsafe with them. Are there any other cons that you guys can think of about social media? Sometimes people get too wrapped up into it. They start trying to define themselves by social media and how they are on there. I think definitely these days adults and children like kind of take it for granted and just say things on there just because they think it's anonymous, but it can actually like hurt people's feelings and affect people's lives. It's kind of like another additional platform that we can use for like cyberbullying and stuff like that. And so we hear about that on the news. My own kids are six, three, and one, so they're not on any social media platforms yet. Is cyberbullying real? Yes. Yeah, yes yeah. And do you see it a lot in schools in your situations? Yeah. Yes. How do you, as a friend, support someone who's being cyberbullied? You try to take their mind off what's happening online and put it back to something in the real world that oh. they're good at or can do well. Yeah. That's good. You'd made a differentiation between what's online and what's in the real world. Do you think sometimes with technology and social media, we have a tendency to see what's online as reality? Yeah, sometimes we do, and we try to change what we are to match that. Yeah. So it's been a long time since your parents were your age, as Josh mentioned. It's been a long time since Josh and I were your age. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> so, As much as we wouldn't like to admit I, It's it. true, yep, yeah. Yep. I don't even want to do the math right now. But tell us, what is the most difficult thing about being your age? There's always another person who you feel like, I should be like them. They're better than me, but you shouldn't. You're fine as the way you are. I think the amount of like stress and homework overwhelms us too much, and then we just think about the negatives in life right now, and just like, oh, I have to get this done, or like, what's going to happen if I don't get it done? We just think about the negative instead of the positive when we finish. The idea of homework, I know, has changed over the years. I've heard more and more about the pressures that are placed on teenagers these days when it comes to homework and schoolwork. Do you feel that pressure? Yeah, like, I mean, it's really tough just because, of course, we're supposed to learn, but the teachers just stack us with the amount of work and think that we can do it. But, I mean, some people, they can, but it's overwhelming in some points. Like, not making it fun. Like, one of my teachers does, like, games with learning, which makes it more fun not to have all this homework, like, at home, so you get it done with, almost. That makes it better. Yeah. More bearable. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there is any benefit to homework? Yeah, I mean, it's another way to learn. I guess it would help your grades and learning what you're learning in class, but no one really likes to do homework. <laughs> I don't like it either. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that feeling. <laughs> Okay, so let's think big picture here. What are your dreams for the future? If you were to think, okay, this is what I want or this is what I want for the world, what are your dreams for the future? I feel like we should find a way to get all those social media platforms to make it so you have a more real person. You're not able to fake who you are on those. And that way people can like you for who you are and not who you're trying to be. Great answer. Izzy, what's your dream for the future? Just, like, think about the positives in the life and, like, continue with your faith and how God can help you through your journey in life and make it better for you instead of you just wanting to be someone who you're not supposed to be and that God planned you not to be. Just kind of listening to God and letting him shape the path of people's lives and making the world more of a faith-based type world than a social media or internet-based world. I love that 
even in the conversation about the future, we're talking a little bit about some ways that our faith informs what the future looks like, right? So how does your faith help you in life? It can help you choose the friends you have because, you know, when you're praying and stuff, you're down in the real world, not up in virtual land. So you can find people based on your faith to be friends with that won't be different than what they really are. I think it's just knowing that God's there for you and that he's going to help you with things and some things he'll leave it to you to make a decision on, but he'll always be there. It helps me like lead to where I need to go next or what I need to do next. It just helps me like teach others about him. During church, I get what I need from the sermon and then put it out into the real world. That's a helpful thing. Mm. Awesome. Hey, it's been great to have you guys today. I know sometimes having these kinds of conversations are big picture and tough to think about, but we really appreciate you guys being vulnerable and just having a conversation with us today. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. It was so great to have a conversation with three of our junior high students here at the church, and now we're really excited to have a conversation with three high school students. We have Mackenzie Grant with us, we have Sam Mendenhall, and we have Stephanie Shirley. Guys, it's good to have you with us today. Thanks for being here. It's good to be here. Thank you. Okay, so first, let's get a little context. So let's just go around the horn here. Give us maybe your name, your grade, your school, and an activity or something that you're involved in. I'm Mackenzie Grant, sophomore at Garland High School. I'm in the show choir there, and I teach a children's choir here. Awesome. I'm Sam Mendenhall. I'm a junior at Pierce High School, and I'm involved with football and track, and I'm also a JC at the youth program. I'm Stephanie Shirley. I go to Booker T. Washington HSPVA, and I dance. What is HSPVA? High School Performing Visual Arts. Uh, HSPVA. No, I'm in the know. Okay, so like Eric previously mentioned, we're not the youngest kids on the block anymore. It's been a while since we've been your age. There have been some changes. Now, I would imagine there's been even more changes since your parents were your age. And one of those things that we want to ask about is technology. What's one thing about modern technology that your parents just have a hard time understanding? I think one of the big things is there's so many forms of social media. And I think my parents get confused, like, why do you need, like, Snapchat, Instagram, and all the other ones? And I think it's because they're different forms and it's easier to do things. Like, Snapchat, it's easier to catch up with old friends and Instagram, it's easier to like see what other people are up to. So I think they have a hard time understanding that text messaging doesn't just work for everything. It's hard to explain the words that come from those different social medias or technologies, like the lingo that gets made and then it's only a thing for a week or so. That doesn't go over well. Wait, wait, explain that more. So there are like phrases and I can't think of like a specific one right now, but they don't make any sense okay if you don't see like the original thing or if you don't go to a high school or a middle school I gotcha. and like see them get used because they're just like random syllables put together and you're like oh that was funny but then your parents have no idea what's going on because they are not part just of the conversation that, yeah, yeah that doesn't make any sense yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah okay i think like because i live with my mom she just doesn't really understand like the full idea of it she kind of like gets it but not like really like understand it yeah. you know Yep. Yeah. Like just the motivation or the big picture behind, like, right. why you're so into it. Well, I'm not really that into it. Oh, okay. But yeah, well, why just people like other might be into it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That's fair. So naturally, when we talk about technology, social media gets brought up, right? I mean, Facebook started as sort of, well, MySpace and a couple others, but like one of the first big ones to blow up was Facebook and it was on the computer, right? But as iPhones and other kinds of smartphones came out, social media got super prevalent from mobile devices, right? So let's talk a little bit about social media. What is a pro and a con? In fact, let's start with the pros. What are some pros of social media? I think one of the biggest things for me is that I have friends from camp and they live like all over. And so it's a lot easier for me to catch up with them and see what they're up to and how they're doing. And it makes it a lot easier. So that's a big benefit. And I'd say a con is that people can always videotape you. So if you're not doing what maybe you should be doing, it's a lot easier to get in trouble where as people my parents' age and older people, they could do stupid stuff and not always get in trouble. <laughs> get away with anything. Yes. Yeah. It's a new form of accountability, if you will. Yes. 
I like social media because I think it's like kind of cool to see what other people are doing, like especially in dance. Like, oh, they just did that. That's super cool. And I guess like the con of it, it's like a lot of people, they get so wrapped up into it. Like, oh, I only got this many likes. I'm going to take this post down, even if they really like that post. And then like they just kind of get like the head like wrapped into like, oh, it has to be picture perfect. Right. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. I think some of the different platforms are more good than bad. But some of them are a lot worse than the others. Like, I have a Facebook, which a lot of the kids don't have. But I do it to participate in the decorating contests around our neighborhood. Or we enter our dog in a Puggle puppy pageant every month <laughs> to see if it pageant. goes well. But I know, like, I also have a Twitter. And sometimes people get in fights because there's, like, simple disagreements over beliefs or political affiliations. Sure. And it can get a lot more aggressive when you aren't face-to-face, so you could just delete it like it never happened. So can you tell me a little bit more about this pressure of obtaining likes, putting that picture-perfect image up there or video, and then the pressure of seeking that sense of approval? Do you feel that pressure? What does that look like? I think a lot of, like, Instagram especially is focused around, like, for homecoming, for example, people, like, will take pictures not to just have them because it's like, oh, I enjoyed going to dinner and the dance, and now I have these pictures, and I can look back and think about how much fun it was, but people will just take pictures just to be like, oh, I look good in this, I'm going to post it, I'm going to get a lot of likes. And so I think it puts more pressure on just that superficial kind of view on social media rather than actually having a good time. Are there any teenagers having conversations about trying to be anti this social pressure? You know what I mean? Like there's anti-bullying conversations and awareness campaigns. Is there a conversation within high schools from high schoolers about what it would take to buck the trend? I feel like a lot of people just acknowledge that it's not really healthy, the fixation everybody has on the likes, but no one really does anything to stop it because it's very deeply rooted in how it goes. Because, like, you expect everyone to post their homecoming pictures a day or two afterwards, and you're like, where were your pictures? Mm. And everybody needs to have posted them or else you're behind or out of the loop. So even if you're not the one maybe seeking all the likes and the approval, there's at least this pressure of a minimal participation. Yeah. Interesting. I'm interested in, you know, we've talked a little bit about technology. I might broaden the scope just a little bit. What do you feel like the most difficult thing is about being your age today? Wow. It's a hard one. (laughs) It's a good one. We're asking the tough questions here on More Than Sunday. That's right. There's a lot of expectations. There's been a lot of differences and so a lot of the adults are like, oh, well, when I was your age, like, when I, was your I age. could pay for that. Like, college has gotten a lot more expensive, especially with, like, the minimum wage and everything. And so a lot of teenagers have to have, like, multiple jobs to help their family. And then adults are like, well, if you just worked a little bit harder, but they're working, like, as hard as they possibly can, mm-hmm. but the viewpoints are so different. And then a lot of people are very negative towards kids because it's like, oh, they're not doing anything to help us, but we can't make the biggest impact on our own. Do you feel like the balance between having jobs to help supplement that income like you talked about, but also expectations of good grades to get into college and extracurriculars to get into college and all these other things? I mean, the combination of all those things, is that sort of where the pressure comes from? I think so. (laughs) Yeah, I think so completely. And especially I feel high schoolers today, there's so much pressure to do SAT and take prep classes and get good grades to get into college. I'm sure there is still pressure to, you know, get good grades and get into a good college, but I feel like the whole process of college applications and stuff is so exploded and it's so prevalent. Like, I probably think about SAT stuff, college stuff, probably every day where I think parents and older people didn't have to think about it every day. Well, and back when some of the college admission processes were initiated or started out, things like the SAT and GPAs and those sorts of things were to try to find a general assessment of people's knowledge and some of those things. And now, because it has become a system, I mean, we have an opportunity as students that are going through that system to work toward, I don't want to say gaming the system, but to taking those prep classes and trying to boost or bolster our extracurricular resumes and those sorts of things. And so I would imagine that trying to keep up with those things When other people are doing it, you almost have no choice but to jump on the bandwagon and try to, quote-unquote, compete for those college spots. 
Stephanie, what's the pressure like at HSPVA? <laughs> I think they're normally like pretty chill, but it's just hard trying to like be the best. Yeah. Because you're around everyone who's talented. So it's like, okay, we're all good. Now it's just trying to find out who's going to stand out. And it's not just like in art. It's also in school because like they're known for getting really competitive with your ranking and everything. So it's just becoming the best at so the school. So you're trying to be the best with your academics, but then you're also trying to be the best dancer, the best painter, all the V's and the A's of the <laughs> HSPVA. <laughs> Let me ask a broader question. What are your dreams for the future? That can be personal. That can be in general for the world, for the country. What do you dream about for the future? I don't really have like a college major lockdown or an exact job that I want to go into, but I think I definitely want to go into a field where I can help people and use my gifts, talents, and knowledge to help people. I think like my goal for when I'm older is just to do something different than everyone else before me has done. I don't know exactly what it is going to be, but that's it. Like That's just my head. You want to be a right trailblazer? Now. Yes. That's awesome. I want to do something musically without people being like, oh, not very many people make it, so you should try something different. I want that to kind of stop happening. Yeah. Do you have a lot of those voices kind of in your life? I have one friend who's very gifted in music, and she was talking about how like, she didn't need to be taking this math class because it wasn't something that would be directly towards her future that she had planned. And our teacher was like, well, dreams die, so you should really have a backup plan. Mm. I'm like, that's a little harsh. <laughs> yeah. And so you hear that voice, and it makes you want to yeah. try even harder. Mm -hmm. What about for the world? What are your dreams for the future of the world? I wish they could stop using the shock factor of the world's going to end in like five years. Mm -hmm. We should be making changes without being scared into it. I think one is probably young people having more of a voice and feeling like they can make more of an impact. And it's getting a lot better today. I have a lot of friends that are in clubs, like environmental clubs and stuff, but there's always people that say, oh, you're only 16, you can't do anything, and I hope that in the future more kids will feel like they have a voice and they can actually have an impact. So all three of you are active members in our church and youth group and those sorts of things. How does your faith help you in life? I don't know about faith specifically, but I know this church is a very positive impact on my life. I know I can always come to this church on Sunday, and I know in my head I have homework to do, but I'm like, oh, I can go to youth and, like, be relaxed for a little bit, and that helps me get through the week sometimes. Yeah, Sunday school and youth especially is kind of a big deep breath to get ready for the week, and I know that I can just get through this week, and then I can go to youth again in the next week. So I think it's kind of like a big reset button and kind of gets me ready for the week if I have a tough week ahead. I think going to church, it just helps, like, add, like, more positives in my life. It's like, oh, something, like, bad. I'm like, okay, it's fine. I get to go to church and then, like, be with all my friends and everything. So, yeah. So we have one question that we ask everyone on the podcast. We'd love to ask you guys today. So at this point in your life, what is one thing that you wish someone would have told you? Not to be in my head so much. I really, like, internalize everything. So anything that's bad, I'm like, okay, what did I do wrong? So rather than just, like, I need to start, like, just letting it go. Like, okay, that happened. How do I learn from this? Take it in, use it as a lesson, rather than, like, oh, I did this wrong. Like, I'm a failure. I wish we had been told that you don't have to be good at something on the first try. I go to a school full of kids who have been called gifted and talented their whole life, and now we're in, like, an actual academic setting that could challenge us. And a lot of people, including myself, if we do something and it's not as easy as it's always been, then people tend to give up on it. And that doesn't need to be how it needs to be because you can't be good at everything. I wish more people would have told me to find a good balance between like work and relaxing because I feel like I've always been told like you always have to go 100 miles per hour, do everything that you can and a big emphasis on grades and stuff. But, I mean, high school is supposed to be challenging, supposed to get you ready for the future, but it's also supposed to be fun. And I feel like as I've gone through two years now, I'm kind of finding the balance between making sure that I'm on the right track for my future, but also enjoying life as a teenager. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. These are the kinds of conversations that we feel like are 
important for us to be having with people that aren't our own age to get valuable perspective from y'all. And we had some great junior high students on earlier in the episode as well. And so your conversations and comments have been insightful and helpful for us. So we really appreciate you taking the time today. Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having Thank us. Thank you. Really fun. an important conversation to have to be able to provide an opportunity just to listen to the voices of teenagers today. I know that was eye-opening for me to be able to hear about the experiences of being in junior high and also the experiences of being in high school. One thing in particular that I appreciated was what Sam said about the hope that he has that more and more young people can feel empowered to raise their voice. And so I hope that today was just one of those ways that even in a small way that we have valued the voices of those youth in our church and given them an opportunity to not just listen from us, but to actually teach us. In that spirit, we want to leave you with a verse from 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is verse 12. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of More Than Sunday. If you like the podcast, please feel free to share it, go online and leave a comment, or give us a rating so that others might hear about us. We've got a new episode coming out every Wednesday, so make sure you also subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss our next episode. If you want to find out more about First United Methodist Church Richardson, you can find us online at fumcr.com, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. Special thanks to our panel of youth for joining us this week, and make sure you tune in next Wednesday. Have a great week. Thank you.